Hi, everybody. Jesse Lucas here of Embodied Movement Training, and I am back for another episode of Conscious Body Conversations. And today I have Jennifer Miskell, who is, she, here's how I connected with her. She's comes of the school of the Institute of Psychology of Eating. So talking about your relationship with how, how you eat. She's also a certified um, aroma therapy. Okay. You're going to have to say what you are. <laughs> um, anyway, Jennifer, I love, I love how we both speak the same language. You coming from this relationship with food and how it affects your emotions. We're going to be talking about emotional eating today. I talk about a movement and how how you can use movement to change the flow of emotion. So we have such a rich place where you and I meet. Jennifer, I'm going to let you, I know we don't have a lot of time today, so I'm going to let you take it. Okay. All right. So what I do is I'm an aroma freedom practitioner. So I use essential oils to help people move through their emotions. But what I really want to share with people today is, um, you know, I help people feel empowered in their relationship with food and I get so fired up about this because anytime I hear a woman talk about how they have no willpower when it comes to their relationship with food, I get, I get fired up because it's putting the, the diet industry has sold women this lie that it's all about willpower, that it's all that they have no control around their relationship with food. And I think when you believe that, you naturally start to feel like there's something wrong with you, that it's not anything else going on. There's just something inherently wrong with you, which produces this deep rooted shame, which only perpetuates the cycle of emotional eating that we have with food, because we can't make shifts in our relationship with food from a place of shame or judgment or blame. And so the first thing I really wanna share with women as, is there's nothing wrong with you and if you are binge eating or emotional eating, chances are you have a pretty damn good reason for it. And this is where I want to kind of open the conversation up with, with us is because, you know, we, there's this emotional component to emotional eating that is kind of taboo. No one really wants to talk about emotions. I think it's one of the most overlooked components of overall wellness today, like mental, emotional health is such a driver of not only our relationship with food, but health overall. And, you know, you have people who understand that emotions are important and they might be more of your people who are like, I'm just going to focus on the positive and I'm just going to override these difficult emotions. Or you have people that are like, I'm just going to numb it out or I'm going to just stuff it down. And either way, we're just, we're avoiding it. And I really want to create a culture or a community that normalizes emotions and is okay with really looking at what are those deeper messages. Now, I'm not gonna deny that emotional eating has this biological component, right? It could be macronutrient imbalance, it could be food restriction, it could be meal timing, meal skip, skipping, overall just not eating enough. But there's also this other deeper component of our emotions. You know, you eat what you are, who are you showing up as, and what are those hidden messages that our relationship with food is trying to tell us. Like it, it's, a, it's a deeper message that's trying to get our attention. And the more intense the emotional eating or binge eating is, the louder our body is trying to get our attention. And you, you know, our body can't use English. It would be nice if it could just speak <laughs> and just say, hey, this is what I've got going on, but it doesn't. So we have to kind of look at our behavior as a message or a symptom from the body that is trying to ask us to look deeper. And once we can really dive in and figure that out, that's when our relationship with food is going to naturally shift. You, you just like dropped some serious wisdom right there. One of the things I want to pick up on is this kind of, let's just take off this cloak of shame Let's take off the blame. Let's take off all of the internalization of whatever all of these external messages from, you know, generations that have been not connected. And I love what you said about let's normalize talking about dealing with, you know, having tools to 
to connect with process our emotions. That's exactly what I do through the movement world. And I think, you know, that's where our, our conversations are so congruent. We need to just kind of safely, gently, compassionately expose this realm of emotion because emotion is connected. You know, I know it's connected to our posture, our, our, our presence, our movement of the body, and you know, it's connected to our relationship with food. And that's, I think the concept of relationship here, that's one of the things I'm hearing. I look at relationship with movement, you know, I see it in, in, in fitness and how it can either be of service or it can be damaging, you know, the, the, how people connect with movement and exercise or whatever, you just kind of really put it into perspective that it's not just about it's of course it is about, you know, the molecules you're putting in your body, the nutrients, et cetera, but it's not just about that. It's about your relationship with it. And if we can normalize that and really have a compassionate place to put it and, and speak and be heard and have those tools to really understand. I think that that's one of the awakenings going on right now. One of my kind of purposes in doing this, this series is to normalize these conversations. So I love that those components that you just brought to the table. I hope people who just heard that can now be like, kind of take a sigh of relief and realize like, okay, you know, it's not wrong with me, but let's, you know, let's, let's talk about these things. So what would you say to someone who maybe is just kind of having that aha moment, realizing, you know, they've been kind of trying this, trying that, whether it's trying, you know, the, the more practical things like caloric restriction or, you know, the timing of their eating or, or what their macronutrients are. So, you know, again, there's a place for all of that, but what would you say to the person who's just kind of opening up to this other realm of, oh, there's, there's a relationship I have with eating with food. And there's an emotional component to that. What would be like, kind of the first, like dip in your toe in the water, safely, compassionately, um, drop us some knowledge. Well, there. One thing I would love to share is this gift that another teacher gave to me that I keep wanting to give to others. Because in that moment, when you first realize that, oh, okay, there's a deeper component, that in and of itself can, can create more stress and make you want to eat more. And because you keep talking about these tools, right? Most of us don't have the tools. We weren't really raised by parents who knew about emotional intelligence. You know, we're lucky to have that conversation kind of more prevalent now. But what I would say is if you're first, this is like a first thing you're hearing, like, okay, it's not a willpower issue. What I would say is to give yourself grace. Like I get emotional every time I say this, because if you are eating and you just ate way more than you felt and you're really uncomfortable in your body, take a moment to say, thank you. Thank yourself for taking care of yourself in the best way that you know how right now. And from that place, you can actually make change. If you get up and the next day you do the same thing, you just keep thanking yourself. And I had such profound shifts. It's seriously that one thing completely changed my relationship with food. Because when you sit there and you're like, I'm so disgusting. I can't believe I just ate that. Why do I keep doing that to myself? It makes you want to go in the kitchen and eat more. But if you say to yourself, wow, that was really like, whatever I was just dealing with was really difficult. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of you in the best. This is all you've known for so long. And we are naturally wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So if you don't have the tools to deal with those painful, difficult emotions, oh, and all you know is food because at birth, that's what we're trained, right? As babies, baby cries, given milk, they feel better. We are hardwired towards that. When you have that compassion and understanding, it's so much easier to make a change. So that's what I would say, start there. Just keep, just keep coming back to gratitude and thanking yourself that this is how you took care of yourself. And now you're going to add in more tools. Now you can kind of be a little bit more open to saying, okay, what next? What can I add to my toolbox now so that the emotional eating will get less and less? I don't want to sell people a lie that you're going to completely get rid of it because it may still come back. It just won't happen as often because when it comes back, it's like, okay, what, what's my body trying to tell me? What's it trying to get my attention you have, you have more of a relationship with it talking like, okay, what, okay, now, what are, we, what are we trying to, you know, say now, instead of it being the shame of something I've got to control, it's going to happen a lot less. 
It's not going to happen every single night anymore. It's going to, there's going to be breathing spaces. That is so wise. I think that's the step probably most, most of us, you know, a lot of people miss is that, that segue to, to get to the other tools. You know, we come in from a culture of, you know, quick fixes and immediate gratification. We want everything and we want it now. It's sexy. And <laughs> of course, right. But there's, you know, obviously I think we've proven, you know, that that might not be the most effective way. And I think taking that moment, first of all, to be able to just say, thank you. That's a tool any of us has. We can stop, you know, this video immediately and just do that. You don't need time. You don't need money. You don't need another person. You can just do that yourself. And there's a through line to these conversations that I've been having of personal empowerment, ease, and access. And that tool right there that you just gave us hits all of those markers. You, it doesn't get easier. I mean, I get it. Like when, when you start to kind of really, you know, open your heart, it's, it's not easy. You know, if there's heavy stuff in there, but just try and then try again and then try again. Um, ease access. You can do it right now. And that personal empowerment, this is something that's yours and you don't have to rely on anybody else. And I just want to really highlight that marker of, it's important. I teach this in my embodied movement work. You have to kind of create the segue. You have to open up the container. You have to, to kind of create the space where the rest of it can come through. And so that, that moment of grace and gratitude is exactly that. I, th I don't think you could, could have given us anything more, more powerful. The rest I know is behind the curtains. The rest I know is like, you know, the nuanced stuff. I know that's part of the wisdom you have to bring and how you help and serve. And there's a lot out there. I want to keep this short and sweet and digestible um, um, emotionally and practically. So for the people who are like, okay, I'm going to hang up here and I'm going to give myself a moment of grace and gratitude. And then I want more. Where can we find you? So right now I'm on Instagram at nourished underscore end underscore free. And I'm also on Facebook. You can find me nourished and free AFT and a website will be coming soon, but that's where you can find me. If you prefer email, if you're not on social media, you can do miskel, my last name, M-I-S-K-I-E-L, Jen, J-E-N at gmail.com. Awesome. I will include all of those uh, right here with the video. So all you have to do is click. Uh, I know that Jen has so much wisdom behind this conversation. I am so grateful, Jen. Thank you for being able to, to kind of come forward and bring this. It's such an important and opening conversation. I think we are at a turning point. Last year really kind of blew our minds as far as our, the fragility of our health and well-being. And my hope is that through conversations like this, people do find those nuggets, those empowered pieces to be able to, to take back some control and realize, you know, the ease and the access and, and how profound it is when you can do those things. So thank you so much for bringing just, you know, a tiny but very powerful piece of, of what you have. I know there's more to come from you. I have a feeling that you and I have some other conversations to have. So don't be surprised if you see her on the radar again. And thank you everybody for listening, tuning into these conscious body conversations. If you want to learn more about how I do this through movement, embodied movement is what I call it. Embodiedmovementtraining.com is where you can find me. Or if you're seeing this on social, just click on my profile and say hello and tune into the next episode. Jen, thank you everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Jesse.